Hello there, my name is Nate Jackson. The Eclipse. Hello there, welcome back. We're at series three now. Yes, it's late. It's late at least when I'm filming this. And there's nothing more appropriate in the late time than late Ozu. Yes, it is Late Ozu time. Eclipse Series 3, Late Ozu. Uh, the title referring to the next five films in this series are basically just movies in the later part of Yasuhiro Ozu's life. Um, movies he did um, after the success of the hugely success, the wild success of Tokyo Story, which was done in 1953. There was a small gap between that movie and his next film, which was done in 1956, which we'll talk about in a minute. And so, and it wasn't the first time, it actually wasn't the first time that um, Ozu, there was a break between Ozu's movies. Um, he, there was a short break, he, I think there was a, I'm looking, there was a four, there was a four year break between What Did the Lady Forget and Brothers and Sisters of the Tota Family as well as a five-year break between There Was a Father and Record of a Tenement Gentleman. So he wasn't one to, who was, you know, he wasn't, a, he wasn't someone who was not unaccustomed to taking breaks between movies. Usually he ha had been cranking out at least one movie a year since he started for the most part, but he would take breaks between movies and this next the next few movies we're going to talk about reflect what happened after his final break before he retired and uh, yeah so we're going to begin with the first one which is entitled early spring and let's see uh, 1956 144 minutes black and white japanese yeah all that stuff this is the case by the way they decided to just tear out the um, tear out everything and just scan the cover on the back they you know you've got that they just decided to tear out the descriptions and paste them all together so I'm gonna have to estimate the um, estimate the times and all that good stuff in years and I'll do my best so anyway um Early Spring, really cool movie. Not going to spoil much about this movie. In fact, you know, I don't really have much to say, so I will give you the basic plot. Basically, it's about this man named, I think, Shoji, who works at a fire, a fire brick manufacturing company, and he lives with his wife, Masako, and they kind of have like a sort of mundane life, and um, he ends up meeting getting a really cozy with one of his co-workers, Gold, who's nicknamed Goldfish. I don't know her. Don't, don't think there's. they actually say her real name. Did they say her real name? I'm looking. Sh Shio Kan Kaneko. But they call her Goldfish because she has big eyes. Which, I don't know why they named her Goldfish, because her eyes are just the same as Masako's. You know, her, I mean, it's, there's no real big difference. I mean, at least I could tell. In fact, they have like the same hairstyle, the same just facial structure. It's, you know, I don't, don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why. Anyway, so the two of them eventually have an affair, Shoji and Goldfish, and he tries to hide it from his wife, and eventually she catches up with them, and they have to make a decision about their future, and yeah. So yeah, it's it's very very different. It's definitely a very different movie from what from what Ozu had been making previous mov uh, movies like Late Spring and Tokyo Story and movies like that that are more centered around families, not necessarily like adult relationships. There were adult relationships in movies like Late Spring and Tokyo Story and all that, but they have more of a family aspect to it. And there, and to be fair, Shoji and Masako were a family. Um, they had a son who died, um, and that 
actually plays into their the the loosening of their relationship or however you want to call it and so because of that it is not too too dissimilar to his other movies but at the same time it, it, again it is very different and also another big aspect that i noticed of this movie is that a lot of it is about like offices like people who work in offices and you know office buildings and there isn't a lot of that that I can think of in Ozu's movies. There are movies like, um, there are movies uh, that Kurosawa did, such as The Bad Sleep Well and EQ, which focus on offices and businesses and all that, like high rises and kind of corporate jobs and things like that. Companies, you know. Whereas Ozu's movies seem to be just focused on like villages, you know, people traveled and all that, and so cities were not foreign, you know, modern cities were not foreign to Ozu, but they just didn't get a lot, I, I feel like they just didn't get a lot of screen time as much as this movie, as much as Early Spring. So those, those are the little things I noticed that I wanted to share with you. Outside of that, I really like this one. I thought, actually thought it was one of probably Ozu's best. It might be one of Ozu's best. I'd like to think that. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's, I'd, I'd like to think that we're, we're off to a good start. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. Leave it, leave it that. Um, again, I would highly recommend this one. It's definitely one of Ozu's best. Early Spring gets an A from me. There, there's Early Spring. Yeah. This is the case, by the way. They shoved all the discs in here like that. So, I don't know. Anyway, so, early spring A. And that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching. And tomorrow, we got well, the rest we got. Let me get the thing out here. So, tomorrow we got Tokyo Twilight. And then, and then Thursday, and then Friday, we got Equinox Flower. Saturday, late autumn, summer. And then Sunday, the end of summer. And that's that. And yeah, so anyway, we'll see what else Ozu has in store for us in the next few days. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for Tokyo Twilight. That one right there. That one right there. And until then, goodbye.